Oh, how glad I am to be in time. I must tell you the amazing reason of my hurried journey from America. One day, my little girl astonished me by saying, Mommy, if there were Jesus in the world now, what would you do? Darling baby, I would feel like getting onto the first train and going to him as fast as I could. Well, Mommy, he is in the world. I felt a sudden great awe come over me as my tiny one spoke. What do you mean, my precious? How do you know, I said. He told me himself, so of course he's in the world. Full of wonder, I thought, is this a sacred message which is being given to me out of the mouth of my babe? And I prayed that it might be made clear to me. The next day, she said, insistently as though she could not understand, Mommy, darling, why isn't you gone to see Lord Jesus? He's told me two times that he is really here in the world. Tiny love, Mommy doesn't know where he is. How could she find him? We see, Mommy, we see. I was naturally perturbed. That same afternoon, being out for a walk with my child, she suddenly stood still and cried out. There he is, there he is. She was trembling with excitement and pointing at the windows of a magazine store where there was a picture of Abdu'l-Bahá. I bought the paper, found this address, caught a boat that same night, and here I am. You are listening to the Journey West podcast, dedicated to following the travels of Abdu'l-Bahá in the West. The previous account was taken from the book The Chosen Highway by Lady Blomfeld. The little girl in the story saw Abdu'l-Bahá come to her in her dreams. I find this story valuable on many levels. There's the persistence on the mother's part for the search for the truth, and the connection between dreams and the spiritual realities. Also, it shows the purity of children. Lady Blomfeld also said the following. It was of great interest to notice the effect the presence of Abdu'l-Bahá had upon some children. One little girl whispered, Look, that is Jesus when he was old. Perhaps their unstained nature sensed the breath of holiness which was always with him and caused these little ones to liken him to the most holy one of whom they were conscious. Speaking of purity, let's go now to our reader this week. Weiler Metke for a talk by Abdu'l-Bahá on the two natures of man. The Two Natures in Man, November 1st, 1911. Today is a day of rejoicing in Paris. They are celebrating the Festival of All Saints. Why do you think that these people were called saints? The word has a very real meaning. A saint is one who leads a life of purity one who has freed himself from all human weaknesses and imperfections. In man there are two natures, his spiritual or higher nature and his material or lower nature. In one he approaches God, in the other he lives for the world alone. Signs of both these natures are to be found in men. In his material aspect he expresses untruth, cruelty, and injustice. All these are the outcome of his lower nature. The attributes of his divine nature are shown forth in love, mercy, kindness, truth, and justice, one and all being expressions of his higher nature. Every good habit, every noble quality belongs to man's spiritual nature, whereas all his imperfections, and sinful actions are born of his material nature. If a man's divine nature dominates his human nature, we have a saint. Man has the power both to do good and to do evil. If his power for good predominates, and his inclinations to do wrong are conquered, 
then man in truth may be called a saint. But if, on the contrary, he rejects the things of God and allows his evil passions to conquer him, then he is no better than a mere animal. Saints are men who have freed themselves from the world of matter and who have overcome sin. They live in the world but are not of it, their thoughts being continually in the world of the Spirit. Their lives are spent in holiness, and their deeds show forth love, justice, and godliness. They are illumined from on high. They are as bright and shining lamps in the dark places of the earth. These are the saints of God. The apostles, who were the disciples of Jesus Christ, were just as other men are. They, like their fellows, were attracted by the things of the world, and each thought only of his own advantage. They knew little of justice, nor were the divine perfections found in their midst. But when they followed Christ and believed in him, their ignorance gave place to understanding. Cruelty was changed to justice, falsehood to truth, darkness into light. They had been worldly, they became spiritual and divine. They had been children of darkness. They became sons of God. They became saints. Strive, therefore, to follow in their steps, leaving all worldly things behind, and striving to attain to the spiritual kingdom. Pray to God that he may strengthen you in divine virtue, so that you may become his angels in the world and beacons of light to disclose the mysteries of the kingdom to those with understanding hearts. God sent his prophets into the world to teach and enlighten man, to explain to him the mysteries of the power of the Holy Spirit, to enable him to reflect the light, and so in his turn to be the source of guidance to others. The heavenly books, the Bible, the Quran, and the other holy writings have been given by God as guides into the path of divine virtue, love, justice, and peace. Therefore I say unto you that ye should strive to follow the counsels of these blessed books, and so order your lives that ye may, following the examples set before you, become yourselves the saints of the Most High. This is definitely a fantastic topic, Recently, I was discussing with a group of friends the nature of man and context of the search for truth and how understanding this fundamental principle is so valuable for building societies and seeking justice. Let's go now to the round table to hear what some of the friends thought about this talk. Hi, I'm Kendra, and I'm a writer. Hi, I'm Deborah, and I'm training to become a health coach and midwife. Hi, I'm Samara. I'm an engineer and an artist. So this talk is called The Two Natures in Man. This is pretty interesting, I think, because anyone in the world um, is interested in, or I'm not sure if they're interested, <laughs> may help them if they're interested in human nature, like any, any theories about changing society, about educating people, about the purpose of life, they all have to revolve around some understanding of human nature. And in this talk, Abdu'l-Baha is explaining a view of human nature and that we have um, this duality within us. We have the power to do good or to do evil. I like uh, the part towards the end of the tablet that explains that, well, it, it makes it seem as if this duality is something that is somewhat of a choice. We have the choice either to focus on our material, physical aspect of our being or our spiritual aspect. And what helps us in making that choice or in really focusing on our spiritual higher nature is to turn to God and more specifically to the manifestations of God and the Word of God revealed by the manifestations. And Abdu'l-Baha 
gives the example of the disciples of Christ, the apostles of Christ, who were just like any other man, um, focusing their energies on their lower nature and had virtue, or they had they lacked virtues and acted unjustly and with falsehood. But when they decided to follow the follow Jesus and dedicate their life to him, they became like saints because they manifested the higher spiritual side of their nature and the virtues associated with that saintliness. My question is like, you know, like how it's, it's hard to talk about this uh, the higher nature while you are you didn't acquire that kind of uh, quality. Baha'u'llah says, he who who's words exceed his deeds, better his deeds than his life. I think for me, it's like, uh, like instead of talking about this is, you know, you have to, like, you know, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this, then it's better to focus on one who has done such kind of, uh, like, heavenly attributes. So, like, for me, as a Baha'i, like, you know, I have to focus on Abdul Baha, who has done those kind of qualities, like, I agree that it's very important to always have an example. Human beings, we are always in need of an example. That's how we learn. Um, I like what you were saying, Deborah, about the disciples of Christ, and I was thinking about the word disciple itself and how it shares the same root as the word discipline. And I think that also goes back to what you were saying about choice. And it takes a lot of discipline to be a saint. At least that's also what I hear Abdul Baha saying in this talk. Um, it's about consciously choosing um, how to behave, what habits to develop. And this is an age-old test, like since the beginning of time in my, in my mind at least, we've struggled to maintain good habits, just and we've struggled to be disciplined. So my one thing I think about a lot is motivation. What actually motivates us to want to even be a saint? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people that would hear this talk or think about the concept of our spiritual nature, but then be like, well, why try? Because <laughs> it seems so difficult. Well, I'm, I'm thinking back on the second to last paragraph in the tablet that talks about the purpose of the prophets in coming basically to enable man to reflect the light of God mm -hmm. and then in turn to be a source of guidance to others. So I think mm -hmm. one source of motivation is in fact the prophets and their revelation, the word mm -hmm. that they reveal, the blessed books as Abdul Baha refers to them later. And I think also like Samira was implying a little bit or what I understood from what you were saying is that the focus can't be on ourselves because we're always going to be imperfect. We're never going to be able as human beings to cap be capable of becoming perfect saints. Um, so if we focus on our imperfections and our lack of capacity, we'll become kind of hopeless maybe or paralyzed. paralyzed. Yeah, that's a good word. So the focus has to be on something outside of us, like the manifestations or like a perfect example of a saint, let's say Abdul Baha or the disciples of Christ or other the saintly figures that we, we hear about in history. How about uh, like focusing on your like, you know, good qualities? It can uh, create a new like, you know, kind of motivation. I mean, the more you focus like what you were saying, on your faults and weaknesses, and then, like, you know, the more you become, like, you know, to repeat those kind of uh, habits. Otherwise, if you are focusing on good quali qualities you have, then maybe that's a better way of motivation, I don't know. Mm. It's like Abdul Baha says, fix your gaze upon the invisible power of the Lord Riga. Don't see your weakness and frailties. It makes sense, and I think also remembering that we are these beings with a dual nature, that we do have this higher nature within us, and even if we're not manifesting it, it's still there. 
and believing in, in that capacity, I think, is a very important part of being motivated to actually strive to manifest it. Right. Exactly. It's a very hopeful vision mm -hmm. of what we're capable of. That's not shared by you know, everyone. A lot of our systems in the world today, economic, political, etc., are actually based on a different idea of human nature that we're um, incorrigibly selfish or self-interested, and that's just the way it is. So we have to build things systems that, um, in our society to kind of um, just make the best out of <laughs> what, what we can do. But here we're being affirmed as potential angels. We're told that we could actually become angels. There's lots of um, these lists of transformation from darkness into light, from or ignorance can give place to understanding. Cruelty can be changed to justice, falsehood to truth. We, we are capable of being worldly, but then we can also become spiritual and divine. So just exactly like you're saying, having faith that it's possible to advance from wherever we currently are, because I think um, without that sort of hope or conviction that progress is possible, um, it's it's inevitable that we'd be discouraged. So it's a very hopeful vision of human nature, hopeful and realistic, because it explains why um, mistakes are made or mm -hmm. even why things like cruelty exist. I think that this idea of having a dual nature and, and having the power to do both good and evil and us being really in charge of whether we choose to mm -hmm. <laughs> manifest one power or the other um, is very intimately connected with the idea that human beings have free will mm -hmm. and that even though God is guiding humanity and has a vision for where we're going and his will is the will <laughs> in a sense it, it um it predominates all other wills. Still, in the end, each individual human being has control over the choices that they make and the life that they live and the virtues that they choose to manifest, acquire. Free will is, is fascinating. I think it's a philosophical question that goes really deep. <laughs> um, and I like how one of the sentences from the talk says, saints are men who have freed themselves from the world of matter and who have overcome sin. And there's this concept of freedom as being emancipated from the world of animal instinct. And I think there's a lot of confusion about free will because it can sometimes be touted as license to do whatever we want you know it, mm -hmm. this is a free country let me do whatever i want and if that whatever we want isn't informed by um, a sense that humanity is one or conviction that men and women are equal or um, you know belief that progress and advancement are possible then it does, it does degenerate. Free will can um, degenerate and uh, create chaos in society. So it's interesting that liberty is actually, like you're saying, liberty and conformity are related. Mm -hmm. True freedom is conforming ourselves to the will of a power, of a higher power. Yeah, I guess it's like... Um making the choice to turn towards God and to live by the teachings of God's manifestations. That's true freedom in a sense. <laughs> freedom, at least freedom from our human weaknesses and imperfections. I was thinking, uh, I know the, 
I think that saints are like you know, those who are detached from the material things. It's like, like from all religions, if you see that saints, it's it has a kind of uh, distorted uh, image. Let's say the saint is like who has detached means who has gone somewhere to be to know himself. Like see, it's like but. Because like that lower nature makes it like a kind of you neglect it. It's it's mm -hmm. not of use. But like why did God create you know the lower nature if it's not good? Let's say if you are let's if you go like to be a saint somewhere where I don't know, like a monk or something is that good? So can can you can you say like I'm doing good? And then if let's say if you are doing like your business or uh, if you are doing like you know your studies like you know a higher grade and then can it be considered as a lower nature and because you are doing material things there should be somewhere that links this lower and higher nature otherwise like a saint is you know if you have that kind of image you now i don't need to waste my time like you know going like to be a saint so i need even like you know it's better to be Materialistic. No, I hear your point. It's very interesting. The question is that I understand, should we kind of seclude ourselves? Yeah. Should we retreat from society? Because there is this part in the talk that mentions having our thoughts are in the spiritual world. We're always in the spiritual world. But there's also this line about being in the world but not of it. Yeah. So I think being active in society is required of the modern-day saint. I think that's part of the purpose, if you will, of anyone who's trying to make the world a better place. We have to participate and not step out of it. But mm -hmm. then how do we stay immersed in the world and all of the material requirements that it has without forgetting the spiritual realm? I think that's the challenge. How do we, um, as it was said uh, one way Abdul Baha was described is he walked the spiritual path with practical feet. So, yes. how do we learn to do that? I think it has something to do with priorities and consciousness, and we've used this word focus a lot, and we've mentioned discipline. Um, but Abdul Baha uses some interesting verbs in his talk, like dominate. If the divine nature dominates the human nature, then we have a saint. So, there's even this mm. idea that there's a war going on, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> between yeah. our divine nature and our human nature. And he uses a, the verb conquer. If his power for good predominates and his inclinations to do wrong are conquered, then man in truth may be called a saint. So there's some sort of battle to be fought that's basically against ourself or mm. with ourself. But it doesn't mean the body and the material realm are bad things. Mm -hmm. They just have to be in their proper place. I just thought about the part of the tablet that talks about us becoming beacons of light to disclose the mysteries of the kingdom to those with understanding hearts. And then the other part that says that we, God sends his prophets to explain the mystery of the power of the Holy Spirit and to enable humans uh, to reflect the light and so in turn to be the source of guidance to others. And that reminds me of what we've been talking about in terms of not isolating ourselves because really the purpose of us becoming saints or part of that purpose is so that we can help others in that journey as well. And, and so there's this um, need for kind of a twofold moral purpose in a way that uh, is talked about in other writings of the Baha'i faith, where we, on the one hand, are constantly striving to improve ourselves and our character, and on the other hand, are attempting to assist humanity to move forward and become a better place, you know, the world to become a better place. And I think these two these two purposes in life are intimately linked. One can't really happen without, without the other. We can't acquire those saintly characteristics without also trying to help others to acquire it and to bring justice and truthfulness and peace to the world at the same time. 
and vice versa, a world with human beings that aren't striving to become saintly will never progress. That's it for our podcast this week. Special thanks to Selvi and Lillian Zabahi for playing the mother and daughter in our story this week. We'd also like to thank Wyler Meggie for reading the talk by Abdul Baha. Also thanks to our roundtable participants, Semre Akbaldet, Kendra Booth, and Devra Dektiar. For more stories and information on Abdul Baha's travels, visit our site, thejourneywest.org. Thanks for listening. Bye.